In this video, we're going to talk about the rules of logarithms and how we can use that to solve problems we can't with regular algebraic rules. For example, uh, let's say you wanted to solve for x in this problem. 5 to the x equals 30. Now, normally the tools that we have available are things like, you know, take the square root of both sides or the fifth root of both sides or square both sides, right? Things like that. But here, no matter what you do, none of those rules will help us isolate x over here, right? If you take the x to the root of both sides, you know, then you're just going to still have x in another exponent. And, you know, you can try to guess a little bit like, all right, we know that 5 squared is 25. That's pretty close. So we know that x has to be more than 2. But like x to the third power, 5 to the third power is like 125. So that's way too big. So we kind of know that x is like a little bit more than 2. But man, if we wanted a precise decimal, I mean, we wouldn't be able to uh, do that using these rules. So we'll eventually get to this problem by the end of this video. But first, I'm going to talk about these the three rules for logarithms that we can use. And so the first one is this, the log of a times b, where a and b are just anything, either numbers, variables, or something like that. And so whenever two things are multiplied and they're inside the log, that is equal to the log of the first guy plus the log of that second guy. Log of A plus log of B. Now, whether it's log or ln, it's the same rules. So, you know, ln of A times B is equal to the ln of A plus the ln of B. If it's division on the inside, if it's log of A over B, well, that's the same as the log of A minus the log of b. So the theme here is that if it's multiplication on the inside, that's equal to addition on the outside. And if it's division on the inside, that's equal to subtraction on the outside. Now, you can use these rules in reverse in the sense that if you start with log of a plus log of b, you can combine those to write them as the log of a times b. But what you can't do is if you have something like the log of a plus b. So addition on the inside is not multiplication on the outside. In fact, it's nothing. Addition on the inside, you can't simplify that. Similarly, multiplication on the outside, if you have log of a times log of b, you literally just can't simplify that. Uh, you know, you got the same with division. Log of a divided by log of b, immediately you think you can't do anything with that. The third rule here is the log of a to the power of b. So if you have something to the power of something else on the inside of a log, well, that is equal to b times log of a, meaning that the exponent can come out front, b times the log of a. So now let's uh, put these into practice. So let's look at this first problem over here, and let's expand this using these rules that we just learned. Looking at this the first instinct is probably that, well, this is something divided by something else. So we can use that second rule of the log of this guy of a divided by b equaling the log of the first guy, which is 6x, minus the log of that denominator, so ln of y. Now, we don't need to stop here because here the 6x can further be split up because 6 times x, ah, that's our first rule. The multiplication on the inside is addition on the outside. So that's ln of 6 plus ln of x, right? And then, of course, we have this minus ln of y. So there you go. So that's, that's, that's how we can do it. What about this problem over here? Oh, man, we didn't learn any rules with the square root. But actually, if you think about it, the square root of something can always be rewritten as that thing to the power of one half. So first, if we rewrite this as ln of 3p to the power of one half, well, now we can see that that third rule applies, where this is something to the power of something, and so that exponent can come down. So this one half can come out front, so this is equal to one half times the ln of 3p, right? And we can go one step further here because the ln of 3p, that's that first rule. The multiplication on the inside, we can split that up. But of course, notice that this 1 half applies to, to all of it. So we'll just put a little bracket there and 1 half times, then splitting this up, ln of 3 plus ln of p. Right? What about this problem over here? Now, again, there's addition on the inside. 
So even though it's tempting to say, oh yeah, that's the ln of 3 plus the ln of x, you can't do that because there's not a 3 multiplied to the entire inside, right? It's just a part of the inside. So this addition makes it where none of our rules apply because this is not in the form of a times b, a multiplication of the main thing on the inside, right? You get a two terms added. So literally, this, you just can't simplify any further. You can't simplify. This is as simple as you can get, and then other rules can apply. All right, now let's, uh, let's do this problem now, where the question is just uh, solve for x in this equation over here. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Uh, so your instinct might be, all right, well, here, let's just start by the rule, one of the rules we know, the first rule, if you have two things added where they both are a log, you can combine them. And so your, your instinct would be that if we were to combine these, the left-hand side just becomes the ln of x times 3, right? So 3x. And again, if you're ever not sure, you can just make sure that if you go in the reverse direction, that this splits up into ln of 3 plus ln of x. Yeah, so that's how you know that's true. The left, the right hand side is just ln of 30, so it equals the ln of 30. So here, if you ever have the ln of something equals the ln of something else, well, then those two things on the inside have to equal each other, right? So this, here, this implies that the 3x needs to equal that 30. If you want to be formal about it, technically what you're doing is you're exponentiating both sides, meaning you're saying e to the power of this thing equals e to the power of the right hand side. And we know that that can cancel to the point where the left-hand side, that's just 3x, because these two cancel. And here, these cancel, so that's just 30. So either way, you get 3x equals 30. And now, divide both sides by 3, and you get x is 10. So that's one way to get the answer. But the other way to get the answer, your instinct might have been to look at this and say, hey, I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract this term from both sides, this L of 3. So in that case, the left-hand side, you're left with just ln of x. And on the right-hand side, you have ln of 30 minus this ln of 3, right? Minus ln of 3. And that's where that second rule can come in handy, because if you're subtracting two logs, that's the same thing as the ln of the first guy divided by the second guy, right? All inside the log. So we have ln of x equals this. And here, simplifying the inside of the log, 30 over 3 is 10. So the right-hand side is really just ln of 10, and the left-hand side is the ln of x. Well, then, hey, if the ln of x equals the ln of 10, well, then x has to equal 10, as we just said. So here, x equals 10, and that's the same thing that we got on the left. All right, now let's do this problem. Solve for x in this problem. Now, two little factoids that are good to have, uh, you know, the tip of your tongue with these problems is that the ln of 1 is always equal to 0. The ln of 1 is equal to 0. The other is that the ln of e, the number e, is equal to 1. So looking at this, well, the ln of 1, that's just 0, plus, you know, maybe that's just 1. So really, so far, this is just 1 plus 5 to the x equals 31. All right, that's not too bad. In fact, let's subtract 1 from both sides. So the 0 goes away, 1 goes away, we can subtract it. And so 31 minus 1 is 30. We have 5 to the x equals 30. Ah, that's a problem that we started this video with, right? So here, as we said, you know, we know x is probably, it's a little bit bigger than 2 because uh, it's uh, 5 squared is 25, so we know it's a little bit bigger. But if we wanted to know exactly what it is, here's what we can do. And this is now a new strategy that you can use moving forward in your algebra. And that is to take the log of both sides. So when is it wise if you're solving an algebraic problem, if you get stuck, to say, you know what? I'm going to take the log of both sides. And a lot of times, you know, it's confusing because if you have x to the thousandth power equals 14, a lot of people will say, hey, do I take the log of both sides? But no. Because here, you just take the thousandth root of both sides, right? So when, when should you do it? When should you take the log of both sides? And it's whenever you want to solve for something that's in the exponent. So here, you want to solve for the guy that's in the exponent. And that's what you tell your brain, oh, I'm going to take the log of both sides. So let's do it. So if we take the log of both sides, we get the ln of 5 to the x equals the ln of 30. 
And it doesn't matter if you do log or natural log, either way, you'd get the right answer. But so you take the log of both sides, and now that third rule can apply because now the x is in the exponent, and that's where that rule comes in handy. That can come out. So that's going to equal x times ln of 5 equals ln of 30. All right. And so basically, looking at this now, it might still be confusing, like, how do I solve this? But keep in mind, the ln of 5 is just a number. A mathemat so it's like, it's like no different than like the number 3 or whatever. So if a mathematician were to look at this, I mean, they're treating that left-hand side no differently than like 3x, right? If you have 3x equals some number, you divide by 3, right? So here, if you have x times this number equaling some other number, you just divide both sides by that number, by ln of 5. So you get x by itself on the left, and here you have ln of 30 over ln of 5. And it might be tempting there to say, oh yeah, so the lns cancel, and that's just 30 over 5 is 6. But again, keep in mind, the rule doesn't apply like that, right? If you have the ln of something over the ln of something else, I mean, you can't just cancel the lns because the ln of 30 just transforms it into a different number to the point where you can't just cancel it with that. So long story short, you just have to plug it into your calculator. And when you plug it in, when you plug in ln of 30 divided by ln of 5, you should get 2.1, which then again gives us that decimal of what we need. And there's probably more decimal places as well. And you could go as far out as you need. Okay. Last question here. Story problem. Suppose this equation gives you the amount of money in your bank account key years from now. Okay? And what this is representing, by the way, is that the thousand here means that your bank account started with the thousand dollars. That's the starting value when x is zero, so zero years from now when t is zero, you're starting with a thousand dollars. And this 0.05 means that you're growing at five percent per year. So that's like exponential growth. And the question is this, how many years will it take for your money to double? Meaning, at what value of x or t is the y value or the m value 2,000, meaning double what you started. So now, how do you solve a question like this? Step one, panic. Step two, well, essentially, this question is really asking when m is equal, when I plug in 2,000 for m, what is my t? So I'm just, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, plug in 2,000 for m, transcribing this down, and now I'm just solving for t. Now this is just no different than a regular problem here. Divide both sides by 1,000, and we get 2, because 2,000 over 1,000 is this 2, equals here, that 1,000 cancels when you divide it, e to the 0 0.05 t. All right, and now, the variable we want to solve for is in the exponent, so that's that hint, take the log of both sides. So we say ln of 2 on the left equals ln of e to the 0.05t. We could then, of course, see that we could pull this exponent down, right, using that third rule, so that further is going to equal 0.05t times the ln of e, right? So this comes down. And further here, the ln of e is just the number of one. So the right hand side really is just 0.05t. So we have 0.05t, and on the left hand, we just have ln of 2. So ln of 2 equals 0.05t. Just divide both sides by 0.05. So our final answer here is just that t is going to equal the ln of 2 divided by the number 0 0.05. And when you plug that into the calculator, you should get 13.8 approximately, which means that it takes 13 point years. So basically it takes 14 years for your money to double if uh, it's growing at 5% per year. So that's how you can use, use uh, this concept and these rules to solve real world problems.